Yes, welcome back here to the lakeside. It's the Windmill World Masters 2016. Big day today. Still matches to come, as you can see. We've just seen Mark McGinney go through to the men's semi-finals with a 4-2 victory over the plucky and uh, very able Kylie Edmonds. Mark McGinney is at this very moment with Paul Coleman. Mark, many congratulations. Uh, Quarter finalist back here in 2014. So your best run so far here at the Winmore Masters this year? Yeah, it has been. It's been a good tournament for me this week. Yeah, so I've enjoyed it. Obviously in good form. Had a little bit of a scare against James Harrell kicking things off, but knocking out the world champion, you must be feeling really confident of your performance so far. Yeah, I didn't play my normal game today, but I felt really good yesterday. And if I can repeat that later on today, then I'll, I'll be all right. And the next game coming up, obviously Daryl Fitton and Scott Mitchell, two players you'll know well. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm looking forward to playing the winner. It's going to be a great game. That's it. It's too close to score. That really is. It's going to be a great game. That's that one. We look forward to seeing you in the semi final. Well done. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2016 Winmore World Masters, and we're about to complete our men's semi final lineup with a match between two lakeside favourites. Firstly, we welcome to the stage a former Winmore World Masters finalist. He's the reigning BDO World Trophy Champion. He's the Dazzler, Daryl Fitter. We now bring to the stage the reigning, reigning Isle of Man Classic and Welsh Open champion. He's the 2015 Lakeside World Champion. It's Scotty Dog, Scott Mitchell. Never fails to get the crowd going either of these two, the big entertainers, big mates, big time players on the BDO circuit. And now a big battle between them, Fitton and Mitchell. This would actually, John Gwynn, be fit for a final. But we're nowhere near that stage just yet. No, not quite. It'll be a little later this evening when we know who is competing in the final both of these capable of winning this event we know and Daryl Fitton the man in focus right now playing his practice throw um, David Parletti uh, and Dean Reynolds uh, both good players Reynolds a recent winner of a major competition has uh, uh, neither managed to win a set so Fitton yet to uh, drop a set and uh, we all know Scott Mitchell uh, he's almost as impressive, just one set dro dropped in his case. And uh, Oscar Lukiasiak, um, the first of his victims. And the second of them. Oh, come on, the Dazzler. It's left the screen now. <laughs> yeah, the was. Uh, of course it was. Was good competition for Scott, but Scott and Daryl. Looking very impressive so Thank far. You There's the handshake. You'll notice that just leg. above it's the word Scotty Scott Dog is the uh, Prostate Game UK uh, Prostate Cancer UK badge. He's wearing that. That's the chosen charity for the BDO. We had Martin uh, Wolfie Adams with us over the first couple of days. Had his own battles with prostate 50 cancer, 50 much publicised. He was happy to talk about it. And he's more than happy for you guys to support Prostate Cancer UK. And again, the pin badges and all sorts of paraphernalia on sale here, but you can do much more online as well. So well done to everybody raising the awareness 
of prostate cancer across the UK. 58. Yes, a great cause and um, worthy of support, certainly. 95. And uh, Martin Adams uh, delighted that he got the nod that things should be okay. I think he's got to go back every six months. Of course, the great Dennis Priestley had that problem to, to contend with and came through it, so... 85. So, that others who suffer from it have the same reward, if you like. I said to him, uh, knocked out on the first day, Martin, he went, well, I've had worse days this year. <laughs> and that was typical Martin Adams, wasn't yeah, it? That's absolutely. Puts things in perspective. Our player Adams, who uh, has battled against both of these two for a while now. These are, uh, if we consider them veterans of the circuit, 60. Even despite them not actually being that old. Uh, Daryl Fitton, 54. Scott Mitchell, 46. And it's the Dazzler against Scotty Dog. 97. In 2015 world champion Scott Mitchell against the man who, uh, well, he has reached a World Masters final, Scott Fitton. Uh, Daryl Fitton, sorry, at 2007, though, you go back quite a while. I remember that. I watched it on television. I uh, played, played Robert Thornton. Um, cracking game. It really was a brilliant final. And, uh, One hundred. I think it was 6-5 in the end to Thornton. But I remember one crucial point where Fitton was standing on a double. Or certainly on a finish, uh, two, two Scott darts, a single dart and two dart finish, and uh, Thornton took out one five six, and it uh, I think made it five four to Thornton instead of it being five four to Fitton. Eighty. However, that's nearly ten now years ago. It was two thousand and seven, so it's certainly nine years ago. Sometimes forget how close Fitton has come <laughs> to winning lots of things, but actually, the trophy this year goes down as perhaps the the biggest marker in his career well it's why everybody was scott so delighted for 20. him that he did pick that up now scott mitchell who of course has won the world title itself only a couple of years ago manages there to take the early lead with throw second lane is daryl throwing first 'm correct a, a seven five defeat to uh, seven five yeah. Robert Thornton beat John 99. Walton in the semi-finals did uh, Fitton beat Simon Whitlock in the quarter final so uh, didn't exactly have an easy ride into that final did it well you don't do you, any more than they do now um, it's always been the case get to the latter stages of a big competition like this and you've got your work 96. cut out one scott mitchell was knocked out by ross montgomery that year in the oh. last 24 there you go no i do not remember that but there we are i thought you might <laughs> not not there's 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 now. there's and not much in there you don't remember few Swedish flags around the building that's for uh, Vicky Prone who uh, comes up 96 next taking on the golden girl Trina Gulliver the current world champion as well A had a very good uh, time at the oh there we are practicing away even one oh. of the referees having a go Anthony Dundas and play uh, a bit back home in Scotland in Glasgow that was Vicky Prome at the far right of your picture, warming up. 44. Only 44, Daddle. Uh, and it's given Mitchell here a chance because it's uh, fitting on a non finish there. If he can. He could have done with two trebles. He's not 16. even got one in the end. So let off the hook there, Daddle Fitton. So he'll move into finishing territory first. Will be the disaster. 
but uh, 60. He still hasn't really capitalised, has he there, John? No, a 140 now would make Mitchell favourite. That's not to say that Fitton isn't capable of a 106 checkout by any stretch. No, no, but it would make Mitchell favourite. It certainly would. That's right. That's, uh, that's not right in Fitton off the end. But Mitchell hasn't done it either, so... Uh, Fitton then 106. Definitely on now. Oh, yes. 46 left. Topsy wants. 86. Scott, you're a one hundred and twenty-five. So one, two, five. That's one of the job complete. That's the other. One, two, five for Mitchell for the first set. One hundred and five. Well, so close because now the first set could still be up for grabs and it ends as Fitton leg. manages Delta. to take out that double ten Third leg, it's and uh, Scotty Dog Mitchell so close to that big finish uh, probably would have been his biggest score of the leg had he taken it out 99 that's a little better from Mitchell one apiece then and again <laughs> this uh, this lakeside crowd going quiet giving these two players the respect they deserve up on the staging area and uh, everybody engrossed 58. in what's happening some good artwork there one hundred Mitchell with 140 so uh, two decent visits so far so such a slow meaningful walk away from the hockey hasn't it Scott Mitchell picks those darts out of the board and just meanders away from the board without a care in the world well I don't know whether he's still watching but I saw a tweet earlier when I was off uh, commentary from the man who won this three years on the trot in the 1980s, the great Bob Anderson. And if you're still watching Bob, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, great memories, those three years that you won this uh, famous event. And uh, of course became 85. world champion in one of those years as well. So did the double that particular time as we look at Mitchell going for 128. He's not making a a great hole in it. 41. So, 87 when he goes, and this is a disappointing leg from Fitton. Nine darts thrown, only 201 th uh, scored. 55. Scott, you require 87. Mitchell just takes a step back to reassess the situation. 47. And uh, 47 scored, leaving double top next time out. So again, as John was saying, though, Fitton, this has not been a great leg. Back on 2-4-5. Yes, Bob Anderson won it in 86, 87, 88. 88, he was world champion Scott earlier in 88. 40. But uh, Scott Mitchell, the world champion Game from 2015, the uh, takes the first set. And uh, he'd Second love set. to first have this particular event, like so many of those great Game players of the past uh, have done so. Uh, added the World Masters to the World Championship itself. He's, a, he's another one that you're actually surprised that he's actually never been any further than the quarterfinals of this competition. But sometimes it's just not your day. Well, sometimes, and I, th I also 60. think that uh, your career can start, it can start to take off fairly late in life. Um, you know, Dennis Priestley won here in the World Championship in this very, on that very stage in 1991 at the age of 40. And although he'd been recognised as a good player up to that point, that's when his career really took off. And it can happen with so many players. 
And of course, Mitchell's defining moment as a world champion came age 45. Yes. 97. There's a story about never giving up in there somewhere, isn't there? And be patient. Keep at it. Your turn will come. Keep. The main thing, I think, is uh, maintain your self-belief because it would be very easy to give up and say, well, I've tried hard enough now, I've had enough. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty who've been there and fallen by the wayside. It's the ones that stay there and stand up to be counted, whom we recognise, of course. And Scott is such a man, as is Daryl. Uh, go back a long way, Daryl, myself. To the Stockport licensed houses league back in the early 80s. <laughs> He's gone rather further in the game than I did, anyway. Well, uh, Scott Mitchell makes no secret of his love for something else other than uh, darts, and that's his football team, his, uh, his beloved Bournemouth. They're playing right now against Liverpool, and I believe fit into Liverpool fans. I think that's uh, I think that's right. He lives about uh, twenty-five, two miles, three miles Scott from Manchester Yard, United's ground in a suburb of Manchester called Ermston, just off the M60 on the western side of the city. Now then, Mitchell. Now then, double eighteen. This is good stuff. Well, it was nearly perfect stuff, but he shall or will be back. Yeah, got a thumbs up from uh, Richard Ash down there. Yeah, he is a Liverpool fan. I thought he was. I thought I'd seen, uh, seen that before. So uh, they're uh, against each other on the hockey and their team's battling it out. They'll be waiting to get off the hockey and find out the no, score, I'm sure. So uh, those two focused on this for now and uh, very focused is Scott Mitchell as he finds that double nine and finds another victory and put a leg up there's a, a little bit of shouting from uh, in the crowd i think so uh, the referee just having a chat elsewhere it uh, second leg it's scott to to, uh, just seen the first leg go against the throw there and uh, so a very important one that because uh, it could now assist mitchell to a two sets to nil lead if he can One throw hundred. decently on his own throw and make the work hard for Daryl Fitton. An icy stare from Fitton. He could do with the treble here. 40. Fitton hadn't dropped a set in this competition. There's no shame to dropping one Whoa, against hunter. somebody like Scott Mitchell, but uh, he's got to try and stop this little slide. Mitchell, one set up, one leg up against the darts as well. And Fitton's first visit Whoa, wasn't so hunter. good. His second is better. Yes. He needs more. He'd be pleased with that treble because he, he's he's. St almost straining, struggling for it. Whereas here, Mitchell, you see, finding it with rather more regularity. You mentioned Bob Anderson earlier, having won it three times, something that Martin Adams has done 60. as well. The uh, Scott, most wins in this competition belong to Eric Bristow, of course, five of those. Uh, the most 180s, John, we were present for it came from Whoa, one Larry Butler 100. 23 of them last year on his uh, saw to the final yes oh, was Lugini might enjoyable. be able to push on that door as well he's very uh, enjoyable last year watching Larry Butler it wasn't just <laughs> terrific got your course, anyway here and now it's Mitchell 61 double 18 52. Well, it's just as well for him that Fitton is out of reach, or that Mitchell is out of reach for Fitton. 
50 yeah, if you want to look at the glass half full scott, you're a scott knew he was coming back so uh, can complete the job this time around one on the inside of that would be lovely Five. that's a bit too far on the inside of that Darryl so a, a big chance it's big but it's a big chance for fitton yes it was a disappointing 58 uh, makes life difficult and you cannot see mitchell somehow missing again Scott, you're if he four. goes in single two there's a chance that he might but that's a lovely marker yes he's got to move slightly to his right but the pitch is just over that's exactly perfectly i imagine it might be i don't always get it as right as that but it was asking Third set. First leg, it's got to for throw first. exactly what was Bring delivered on. and in a blink scott mitchell is two up with a little shake of the head from uh, fitting if you were Whoa, looking in the background there you might have spotted that watching here on premier sports hd just that little shake of the head from Daryl Fitton. And he's probably saying, what am I doing? I've been so good up to this point. What am I doing? Come on. And that is better. Yes, Whoa, it is a head shake of personal disdain. Uh, it's nothing aimed at Mitchell. Mitchell's getting on with his game and playing decent darts. <laughs> And uh, as I said a few minutes ago, Fitton Whoa, searching, 100. straining, really trying his best. But it, if it isn't quite happening, somehow you can try even harder. Now, that, that's dropped in nicely. And it's a throw like this that can suddenly get you back on 140. track. The 140 like that can suddenly help get him back on track. It's not restoration of confidence, it's restoration of the range the line well the line's not been too wrong it's the length of the throw into that treble it's got to be surrounding it if not hitting it to be throwing well like many other individual sports the only person that can affect you in this game is you as long as you do your best you're in with a chance and uh, once you no, throw that you weren't expecting to throw that's where you start to your wobble your mind goes elsewhere you start to worry scott mitchell not worrying at all two sets up Whoa, another 100, 100 here takes him Darryl to 101 170. i'm going to say 170 is needed he got a 91 he um, very intelligently very cleverly went down for that treble 17 before uh, to leave him on 170. 96. momentarily we had it wrong Scott, you require 101. anyway mitchell 101 now that's a great dart 41 tops he wants Game clinical, absolutely clinical, wonderful, Second leg, it's and that was one of Fitton's first. better legs, he was getting it back together, but he still lost it, and uh, really needs now to stop the rot, doesn't he, he's lost four of the five legs played, that's more like it, Darryl. that's more like it. It's a better start from Darrell Fitton, but he needs much more of that, he's two sets down, one leg down, and Scott Mitchell as uh, John Quinn quite rightly Whoa, said a moment ago, 100. when he's getting to the finishing end, he's clinical. Yes, in fact, he's lost four in a row. He's only won one out of six legs played so far, Fitton. But there are One's signs that his game is back. And he's now got to back that up by winning a leg and when it's like this and it's only best of three legs in each set 100 it, it, it's not it's not impossible to turn it around quite quickly no, just about make out scott mitchell's daughter in the back left hand part of your screen Katie Mitchell watching on that's better 140 140 180 from Daryl Fitton what a nine darts that is under pressure yeah and that's been coming that that that's been coming that throw that 180 uh, improved his performance over the last couple of legs and um, now he'll be more relaxed 41. on the hockey once you've found that pitch instead of straining just let in the dart do the work the beautiful leg, leg of darts 11 darter 11 darter just what the doctor first. ordered Come on. 
But this is the big one. Now an 11 data for Daryl Fitton. But I tell you what, Scott Mitchell knows. Knows. He knows that Fitton is still a dangerous, oh, dangerous opponent. Even though he's two sets biggest to the part. advantage. The biggest part of that leg, though, for Daryl Fitton was making sure he finished it off <laughs> without letting Scott keep creep up on him because the important one thing was to put a one in that column and all of a sudden... Fitton has woken up here. Another 180. Takes his tally to nine for the competition. Two here. Scott's only hit two all tournaments so far. It's just his average has been good. Hasn't needed those 180s. Fitton's fighting. The point you make about the double, he had to make sure. The point is when you start hitting your travels and you start hitting your scores, relax. The double comes like it did. Now, is it in what? Is it in uh, treble twenties for fun? Here now? This is the Daddle Fitton we know. This is the Fitton that took the world trophy earlier on this year. As John said, he was uh, witness to that. And many people, many people wanted to see Fitton win that competition. He did. Can he add the Masters to it? He's got a big task that he's let himself get into here. Two down, but all of a sudden. The on switch has been pushed for Tarrell Fitton. 135. Scott Another great nine darts. He was going to the treble 10 there, but he won't be too concerned that it went in the big 15 because uh, he'll be back now to win the set. And uh, 90. Well, 90 leaves 71. And Fitton can't afford to miss this, but his confidence at the moment is rather, rather higher than it was five or ten minutes ago. And that's a lovely dart to follow up if he can just inside he does Game exactly shot. inside that dart set. that's the dart player we know called Daryl Fitton the dazzler is beginning to dazzle with his darts and he's back Four in the match first well he was missing Darryl his shine first. but he's now dazzling Game he's 2-1 on. down maybe but he has certainly picked up the point scoring ability his first nine darts in the last two legs have been superb ironically his first dart in this leg is in the five but he might try and follow that up great last dart to recover it yes it was and this is what we talked about a little moment ago with scott mitchell 17 ton pluses already he might not have 180 Whoa, but 17 decent scores well 18 now 18 23 three-figure scores as against 11. say no more yes the two two of them are 180s but the fact is it's Whoa, a massive massive difference that particular stat and it's the reason why Mitchell's ahead as much as anything. And, uh, Fitton realising he's having to fight Mitchell's consistency with the big scores. And he's got to keep those big scores coming if he's to fight Whoa, that consistency. 100. But you wouldn't get anything like that discrepancy if you took it over the last four or five legs since Fitton's revival. Just another reason we all love the darts. It can change from one set, Whoa, from one leg 100. to another. Fairly impressive, three out of five, sixty percent. Forty. And near forty percent for Mitchell is uh, quite acceptable. But percentages can't tell lies because I'd rather have six out of 60. ten than one out of one. <laughs> Absolutely, for those younger ones that don't quite know what John means by that, is that if you've only had one chance at a double, that means your opponent's probably had six or seven. Whoa, well, you only won one leg, exactly. Yeah. Require 160. So, uh, you're absolutely spot on, John. Getting the legs in the leg column and then the sets, inadvertently in the sets column, that's the important thing. You can worry about all your averages and your stats afterwards 60. when you've got through to the next round. Scott, you require 161. 161 then, and... Uh, very, very capable. Treble. 17 for the bullseye. Game very, shot very the capable. Scott Mitchell. Mitchell takes out 161 like shelling peas. Brilliant to behold. What? And even Daddle Fitton, sorry, mate. Even Daddle Fitton there has just got a glimpse of him. Had given him a little round of applause. You can't do anything about shots like that.
Well, you can't deny these two don't have respect for each other. 1-6-1 one, one from Scott Mitchell here. When it was no, Finn in the ascendancy, that last set went his way. He started to find the big dart. He started to find his finishing. As you were saying, three out of five when he got the opportunity. And all of a sudden, the former world champion just goes bang, bang, bang. 1-6-1, one, 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 as you said, four, like it was nothing. Yes, the treble 20 right in the middle. The treble 17, similarly... And the ball. 140. Virtually the dead center of the ball. 240. With that. Uh, really wiped off. So uh, his first six starts, not bad at all. And he can uh, push on. It's been good from fitting as well. Sixteen. A little wayward, but uh, not too much damage done. It's opened the door for here for Fitton now. Against the throw, he lost that leg on throw, but in fairness, it wasn't so much that Fitton lost it, it was more that Mitchell won it. Ninety-one. Uh, with that quite outstanding finish. Um, so, Fitton, something of a chance here of breaking back. Depends on what happens here, I believe, because... 80, so that's one, two, six left. One. Uh, yes, I'd still make fit and favourite, even though Mitchell's ahead on the score. No, he wanted the 20s. 20 He'll go for treble 20 for the ball here. Uh, he, he obviously didn't have a great view of it. There was a delay, and that means Scott, that he moved to his left, I think, in order to try and pitch it over, and didn't succeed. Mitchell just rears back. 49. 49 score. Scott Mitchell then, so Fitton. Yeah, needs this to save the set. He may go bull. He may go treble 14, actually. Oh, he stayed up at treble 20. He went for treble 20, double 44. 11. Well, there's, Scott, you're there's a not madness 57. in that. If you're always firing at treble 20, you stick at it. Tops he wants. That was daughter Katie Game watching. Oh, sure. she's and watching. It's her dad. Scott Mitchell. Go three sets to one to the good here. Well, Fifth set. First I've got to say to that Mitchell, first. we were, we were comparing the uh, checkout stats, and Mitchell proved there that they don't mean everything. He'd five out of nine, he's now made it seven out of 11. And, um, 26. Or rather, he's 38%, and he's now improved on that considerably with the 161 and that one. Uh, he's okay, he's, he, his game is right. Fitton's got his game together, but it's caused 100. Scott Mitchell to up the ante. So, uh, Mitchell here finding just what he wants. 140 here. from this visit for Mitchell. Yes, it's Fitton. Uh, he's won five legs out of nine, and uh, out of uh, five legs of with nine efforts. 140. They haven't had a shot at a double for a little while now. Well, he's matching Scott with his 140. Mitchell's turn. Can't get himself into a finish now. 16. Again, the meaningful stare of Daryl Fitton looking at the board. Looking at the target he wants, and he's finding it a lot easier all of a sudden again. 140 there, 121 for Fitton with Mitchell way back on 275. Well, he may be Scotty Dog, but he's no kitten, Daryl Fitton. You can rest assured about that. 85. Daryl, you require 100. Here he comes, if he can take this. He's got six starts to do it. Against the throw as well. There could be 57. life left in this match. 
the chalk without a finish, 190. Just has to put the pressure on to Fitton so that he knows he's on his shoulder. He's done One just that. 100. 100 here to leave himself on 90. Fitton with 64 then. 16 double 16 from this point onwards. One dart to wrap up the first leg of the fifth set. 32. Well, I wished he'd had another because uh, he'd have been Brown, able to put 90. it just inside there as he did earlier and uh, finish the leg. But now it's very much Mitchell's chance here, double 15. He'd have liked to have been closer with that first Game one. Shot. But it didn't matter, really, did it? Scott, Scott Mitchell. Mitchell. Second was a little way behind at one point first. in that one and all of a sudden he's a leg up in what is a very important set for Daryl Fitton he can't afford to lose any more and he's already a leg down in it and did you notice he chose to go treble 20 double 15 he knew that two single 20s left the ball if he goes the 18s route then that can uh, be to his disadvantage if he doesn't hit the treble a little sigh of anguish from Scott Mitchell as he steps 41. up in this next leg and picks off the odd one. Great game. Two great players. Is it the last set of the 140. match? 140. Going to be if Mitchell wins this leg. Fitton giving himself every hope. That 140, giving 140. himself every chance, but again, Scott Mitchell just steps it up a little bit, as you said a little bit early on there, John. As much as Fitton improved, Mitchell just stayed with him. And that 161, a demonstration of his qualities 50. that won him the World Championship here at Lakeside just under a year ago. Yes. 140. Oh, brilliant darts from Mitchell, who averages over, well over 100, over 100 anyway, 102, 103, maybe. I think 104 in the Grand Slam when he played Adrian Lewis and uh, in the group stage. Uh, that was his best performance 17. on telly for a while. And a snatch start at the end there from Fitton. Hasn't left him with a finish. Mitchell. From 180, 100. now 80. Yes, Fitton's done everything he can to, to stay in this match. He uh, was struggling early doors, got his game 100. together, he's still banging in 140s. But Scott Mitchell Liverpool has 80. been magnificent. And if he takes out this 80, it will definitely be a deserved win. 75 he needs now. He went for 25 and bull. Uh, well, we've been praising him and praising him and praising him, and quite rightly so. But uh, 40 cometh the moment. Daryl, you require 47. It's not cometh the man because now fitting to stay in the match. Double 16. Double 8. Oh, Game Darryl. shot at the second Darryl. Darryl You certainly dazzle when you have to. Thirdly, that was brilliant. That was necessary. And Mitchell's got work to do yet, Alan. He would have felt the world of pressure on his shoulders there. One more dart really would have been the dart to keep him in this competition. And it has done so far. You imagine if he'd missed, you get the sense that Scott would have stepped up and took it out. But Fitton lives to fight another leg at least has to win this to take it to 3-2 and this is good darts from Fitton 121 there. yes it was uh, diverted south wasn't it and not due south because it ended up scoring one 85 but nevertheless a 1-2-1 one, one start this game has the potential being turned on its head and this man in blue is the reason 16. why if he can maintain the form of the last couple of sets for all that he lost that last one it can still yet 59 go the distance yeah see the ladies practicing that Glenn Durant 
in the distance or four or five boards away getting ready for his semi-final 140 this time his third dart doesn't get bounced off into the one it uh, scores 20 and gives him a 140 from that visit still leaves him in the 180 now Mitchell following in 140 I wouldn't like to say who's going to win this leg a lot depends on this visit Fitton needs three figure score yeah, I think he's going to get one yeah, 80 plays, 134. 134 here for the match. Really would be a killer blow. Well, he's hit that 161 earlier on, so you, uh, you're you not counting him out anytime he steps up, are you, Scott Mitchell? 94. To, uh, to take this one out. But Darryl, then, then, this is a big 80. 80 for him because it takes him back within one. And that's, that is the worst possible start for him. Yes. Ah oh dear, he so wanted that treble 20 for double 10, but 2020 tops had to be. Oh, that's a great recovery. That's a great recovery. 60. Oh dear, dear, dear. Scott, that Yorick may well 40. be it for Fitton. And you know, nobody will deny that Game Scott Mitchell shot. deserves to have moved Scott into the Mitchell. last four of the World Masters. Uh, Clinical performance, the highlight of which was a 1 6 1 checkout. A great effort by Fitton after a slow start, but in the end, it was Hottie Dog who was far too hot for Fitton. Well, as I said in the introductions, two big favourites here at Lakeside. We say goodbye to the Dazzler, Daryl Fitton. But through to his first Winmore World Masters semi-final, it's Scotty Dog, Scott Mitchell! Well, the 2015 world champion goes into, well, unknown territory for him. He's never been further than the quarter-final of the World Masters, and he had to beat the World Trophy winner of 2016 to get that far. Mr. Consistent, 23 ton pluses, 11 140 pluses, didn't need a 180. If you don't have to, you don't need them. His nine dart average was 95.13, less than uh, Daryl Fitton's, but his overall average is better, and that's done him. And you've got to say, of that right-hand column, the one three-figure score that counts more than any is one of those, the 161 finish. That was the 140 plus that really mattered in that match. Fitton was throwing beautifully. He was standing on 100 and might well have fancied his chance of uh, staying very much in the match. It didn't knock him out of the match, but it certainly knocked him off his stride and put Scott Mitchell in a strong position. I sometimes wish, John, we had a camera in here with us because you, what you would have seen was Scott Mitchell bouncing around behind me and John. He's enjoyed that. He's enjoying his tournament. So we, uh, we roll on. The, uh, the men's quarterfinals are done. Scott Mitchell takes out Daryl Fitton. Good mates off the hockey and a tough contest on it. And let's hear from the victorious Scotty Dog Scott Mitchell. Scott, very well played through to the semi finals. But you just said off air that was one of the hardest games you've had to play in. Well, ever since I've been around, Daryl's been the one that's helped me and guided me. and. Um, you know, help me in, in the right direction, and, and uh, yeah, that, that's a hard game. He's, he's also my son's favourite player, and so I'll get a text in a minute saying not to bother coming home. But uh, yeah, always tough. You know, playing a friend up there. I know we've got to be professional, but you, you don't have to like it. But Daryl's played very well uh, up until this round. Um, there was a mini revival from him, but a one-six-one checkout kind of put that to the bed. Yeah, I practiced the ball an awful lot, so, um, you know, that's always nice. But, uh, you know, he, I, I was enjoying being there behind him, watching him play so well. So, um, yeah, maybe I got hooked up on that a little bit and, and lost my focus. But, uh, yeah, always hard to beat a mate, to be fair. Bit of banter there with Mark McGinney. Up next in the semis. Well, we've won, we, <laughs> we've, we've won some stuff together in uh, World Cups and Europe Cups. So, um, 
as pairs partners. So now we've got to play each other, which is really tough. And it's the same for Duzzer and Jamie. They, you know, they, they paired up together for England as well. So it's, it's the England quartet left in. Great semi-final lineup. We look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we don't get all gaga and start crying and me and Mark. But yeah, we'll be okay, I'm sure. Good luck. Thank you.